All right. Well, Mayor, uh, it's been another eventful week in Seattle. Uh, you, you came out Monday and um, really had some sharp words for the council. Uh, also talking about cutting $76 million from next year's budget, uh, next year's police department budget. Uh, and the council's had another meeting uh, about potential cuts. Where do, where do things stand in the negotiations back and forth with the council about, quote unquote, defunding the police? So I actually have some hope that uh, council and the chief and I will reach some collaboration process um, to, to really be thoughtful about how we reimagine policing what we do about the budget and what we do to build up a different capacity to respond to 911 calls where we may not want a police officer responding. I think we've seen a number of council members uh, modify their uh, language a little bit to be to say that they actually wanted to look at uh, what levels of cuts were appropriate, but more importantly, what were the functions that we want the police department to do? So. I, I'm hopeful that that's the case. Uh, you know, we, I still think that it is, we can't just cut 50% of the police budget and expect to have the services we need in the city. I think the chief has made that clear. Uh, I agree with that. And, but I think the chief and I have been also clear. We want to reimagine how policing gets done. When people call 911, we want the services they need to be dispatched but we don't have an alternative system built up that is robust enough to respond 24 seven to the hundreds of calls we get in every part of the city. I asked you the question earlier this week, but I have to ask you again, you know, the city, the city of Minneapolis and that council, they, they voted to abolish the, the police department, but, but that was actually setting off a, really a year long process with certain benchmarks and certain dates and a, and a public vote and, and, and really giving time, but also giving concrete deadlines for, for how this is all supposed to work. Why, why not commit to something like that in the city of Seattle? We actually have already committed to a process like that. That's one of the things that's so frustrating is we've set forth what we think needs to happen in terms of public engagement and a thoughtful reimagining of policing and a building up of the capacity of a public health response. Council in response just said, no, let's just cut it and figure it out later. So I think that kind of approach is exactly what we need to do. But we have to start with the premise that just cutting what you have now is not a responsible approach. We still have people calling 911 at all hours of the day in all parts of our city. And sometimes they need a police officer to respond and they need them there quickly. When that happens, we want to be able to serve those people. If we need a different kind of response, which sometimes we do, we need to have that response available too. So this has to be a thoughtful process. There's got to be extensive community engagement and there has to be a plan. None of those things have existed. So I'm hoping that council will engage and have that kind of collaborative process. The chief and I will be engaging continually and we have a process we're going to be doing throughout the city to be talking about the police budget and what police do so that we can have that kind of plan, not just going into next year's budget, but an ongoing basis, because this takes time. Should the police guild be brought into the conversation? I, I talked to the president of the guild earlier this week. He says they haven't been consulted. They are open to uh, potentially expanding the social programs like Health One. So I think that those are two separate questions. Obviously, they are members who are employees of the department the chief has been engaging with. Engaging with the union at the bargaining table, we have a process for that. We absolutely will be at the bargaining table in good faith moving forward. There's a whole process for that. We want to hear from you know, the people who are doing these jobs about what a better way for them to do the jobs is. So having a process again in place that brings people together and comes up with an actual plan to reimagine how we do policing but also how when we do policing, we do it as effectively as possible and with community support. We need all of those things and you can't just do it by cut now, figure it out later. So I wanna to talk to you about the bridge as well. You declared a civil emergency when it comes to the bridge, but uh, the, the question becomes with COVID just uh, uh, bottoming out budgets on a federal level, state level, local level, uh, what does a civil emergency actually do? How, where do you even come up with the money 
for any sort of rebuild or uh, reconstruction of the existing span. So Chris, that's a great idea. The civil emergency gives us a couple of avenues we would not have otherwise. First, on getting revenues, we're working with the state to see if we can get a similar declaration of emergency from the governor. If we do that, that will open uh, areas of funding that we would not be able to access without that. Second, it gives us the ability to go to Congress and federal agencies in a way that we don't have without that declaration. So it'll help us on the revenue side, but it will also help us on the rebuild or fix side. Um, in that emergency order is also giving us the ability to do things as quickly as we can um, and be able to move forward quickly. So that, that proclamation gives us two things. One, hopefully it will help us get more money. And second, it will help the process be, be uh, more expedited. But does that money exist given that everybody, federal, state, local, are slashing their budgets? I think, look, it is a challenging um, resource area for every level of government. We are in unprecedented times and the economy is still continuing to uh, have the impacts of COVID. It's been devastating for Seattle. Um, I know you've been there, but most council members and others haven't been through downtown Seattle for a while to see we are boarded up, there are empty spaces, thousands of jobs are gone, and recovering those jobs is going to be very difficult. But there is still funding, and we think Congress will have funding, um, an additional bill that could help us. Um, we're gonna work very hard talking with our federal delegation to see if we can get funding for the West Seattle bid, Bridge. Mm -hmm. If there's a new uh, bill to help with some of those infrastructure projects, we wanna be at the front of the line. I want to ask you about downtown in just a second, but one more about the bridge. I mean, how do you how do you speed up the timeline? Uh, you're looking back in Minneapolis uh, again to cite Minneapolis. They had a bridge go down in 2007. They rebuilt it in 14 months. Italy had a major bridge, a lot like the the West Seattle Bridge in terms of the length that was rebuilt in just a couple of years. So how how do you how do you speed up the process? We, use, we do exactly that. We have a technical advisory group that's working with Sam Zimbabwe, who's the head of our Department of Transportation, and they are looking at every expedited process they can have in terms of reconstruction, both for a bridge, whether we reconstruct it or repair it, um, and also looking at whether there are any um, shallow tunnel options. They're looking at all of those things, and one of the criteria I gave them was, I want you to look at new processes to expedite this. We're also going to cut down some of the Seattle process so that we can do things on the same track instead of slowing things down. So we will be looking at all of those alternatives to see how quickly we can make sure that we return that mobility. This is not just for West Seattle. This is one of the most important freight corridors that exists in our region. Um, and we will hurt the economy of the whole state if we can't get that restored. Uh, and yes, the Northwest Seaport Alliance uh, called it critical today. Uh, as far as downtown, you just mentioned it. Uh, the Downtown Seattle Association says uh, revenue is down uh, year over year, 93% in downtown. 65 businesses uh, have closed in Seattle, including 44 downtown. Of course, you've heard about uh, more than 20 restaurants uh, downtown. You've heard about what Tom Douglas has announced with his restaurants in South Lake Union. So what is the plan to make sure downtown does not lose more businesses and uh, that, that those businesses will actually return? So Chris, it's really, um, the unfortunate thing is we are just still in the beginning months of the COVID pandemic. And we unfortunately have seen our numbers increase significantly in Seattle, King County and the state in the last two weeks. We've been working really hard with the governor's office to not have to do another stay at home order and to close down the businesses that are open today. Um, but we know that we will not be coming out of this economic downturn anytime soon. We won't be coming out of it until there is some uh, either better treatment for or vaccination for COVID. So what we have to do is make sure that we're supporting those uh, jobs that are left making sure that when we do come out of this and we're competing with every city in America coming out of COVID, that we are able to rebuild our economy as robustly and quickly as possible. And that we do it more equitably and we do it in a way that we can support, you know, the workers of Seattle um, and the small businesses of Seattle. And it will be the most challenging thing our city has had to do economically in the history of the city. 
Uh, so we, we are thinking about every day. I'm talking to a range of stakeholders, including businesses, large and small, labor, uh, community groups, to, to actually have a uh, pull together people in a formal fashion to come up with some very concrete things we need to do so that when COVID is gone, Seattle's positioned to be as better than most cities in America to come back and come back better. How close do you think uh, the, the city of Seattle is to having to close down restaurants and, and bars again based on the trend line? You know, I think that it is a, it's a, we're at a perilous time. Um, the county executive and I are working really uh, closely together to see if there's other things that we can limit, like the number of gatherings and people gathering in park and those things that are, that are leading to transmission so that we can keep uh, restaurants open and businesses open because I think having those jobs is such a critical part of not just the economy but of what people need right now that ability to have uh, a place to go a place to work uh, so we're going to work really hard not to have to shut down businesses a couple more topics in our, our limited amount of time here uh, payroll tax it, you know it was interesting to hear you on Monday talking about any sort of legislation regarding uh, police reform when you came out and said immediately that you would veto if, if something is sent to you to cut funding by 50% this year, you would veto. Uh, but when you and I talked last week about the payroll tax, you didn't really say whether you were considering a, a veto there. Any further decision about uh, the legislation as it stands today from the council? I'll have more to say on that later today, Chris, but I think it's really important that when I'm trying to decide you know, my actions as mayor, the urgency sometimes is uh, what drives it. And a threat to cut 50% of the police budget, as phrased by some, was the rest of the budget for the rest of the year, which would have eliminated police services. Councils now clarified they just mean 50% of what's left this year and 50% next year. Again, that would be a dire cut, and we have to act urgently. Uh, I, I'll have more to say, but the one thing that is true about the payroll tax is it's not intended to be collected until 2022. Um, and so even uh, with the flaws that I've indicated before, I think it has, you know, depending on what I do, we will work hard to come up with a better path for the city of Seattle. Okay, that sounded a lot like uh, what we do in, in the television business, a tease. Uh, so so what what are you saying about the payroll tax? I, I will have more to say exactly on what I'm doing on the payroll tax later today. <laughs> That's a television news tease right there. So you can't say now? She's, she's, she's telling you like she always does. I'll tell you when I um, have something to announce. But I think the important thing is you asked me what's the distinction between cutting 50% of police immediately um, and a payroll tax that won't go into in, in, uh, effect until 2022. Okay. We're talking about two different issues, and uh, I'll move on. Uh, it, uh, I know you like to talk sports, um, and, and so we just talked about the, the, the trend lines uh, as it relates to restaurants and bars. Uh, as you're uh, probably aware, uh, there's been a few NFL teams that have come out now and said, hey, if we can have fans in the stadium this fall, it's going to be at a reduced capacity, 25% or less, 14 to 16 thousand people in a, in a big stadium. Uh, do you anticipate that's going to be the case in Seattle with uh, the Seahawks and, and the Sounders at CenturyLink Field this year? We're having conversations with them. I do know that the Seahawks sent a notice to all season ticket holders that they would refund those season tickets. So I think that's a pretty strong indicator of where they're going as a business. Um, Mariners right now, they're going to have their first game on the road soon. It's a really challenging uh, thing to do for them, but they've taken a lot of proactive steps both here and in the other stadiums to, to make sure that they can continue doing that. Uh, no one's ever had to try it before. So uh, I think what happens to sports is really unclear. Uh, I think that, you know, even at the collegiate level, I don't think we're going to see many games played this fall. Which doesn't bode well for Husky Stadium either. Uh, we are uh, nearly out of time. Are you sure you don't want to address the payroll tax decision right now? So I will make sure that when we have something to announce, you're one of the first to know, Chris. Okay. All right. Thank you, yeah, Mayor. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for everything. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.